Hello everyone, Jordan here back with a new video. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be looking at a piece of video conversion software called UniConverter from Wondershare. Now this is available on PC and Mac, so you've got your main bases covered. And I'm going to run through a few of the key things and then we'll go into the actual software. Before we start, I'd like to say a big thank you to Wondershare for sponsoring this video. So let's get into it. So alongside the obvious functions being able to convert videos, UniConverter also has other handy features, including converting audio files, burning videos to DVD, transferring videos to external devices, editing, compressing videos, and also screen record your PC or laptop. And unlike some other programs, everything I've just mentioned is available on the free version. You can get a premium license, which unlocks a whole host of other features. So now the best thing we can do is jump into the software and give you a demonstration on how it all works. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go over some of the key things in the UniConverter that are probably going to be the most commonly used. So obviously the first we're going to touch on is the video converter. I've got a couple of folders here. So some of my original video content from a couple of them go back like 2018, so three years ago. This one's a .mov, this one's a uh, .flv, and then we've got two MP4s. These two are about five gigabytes to size. This one's five and this one's just under four gigabytes. And these are quite small, but it's more the format of the file that I wanted to show uh, with those two. So what we'll do is we've got a number of different options that we can convert these with. So literally either drag or drop, or you can open, find our folder, and then we can select. So let's do for a start, one of these screen recordings, which is a .mov. So we've got a range of different file formats down here. There's a lot of different options. It's even nice to see that you, there's an Amazon listing. So if you ever upload an Amazon video review of a product, one thing you always come across is a hundred megabytes limit. So it's nice that you can actually go onto there and upload in the correct resolution and size. So that's one I'll definitely be using quite often. For this one, we're going to go for 720p, which is the original source video. But for example, you could just press the same as source, but I just fancy pressing 720 for this one. Other options, we've got subtitles and then audio track swaps. If you do want to do that for what I'm doing, I wouldn't actually be using the audio track that's on the video. So for this one, I don't need it. So you can change the output file at the bottom of the drop down box, then press the three dots. This will bring up your, um, your library on your PC and you can select the folder you want to use. So I've got one that's called converted files. Okay, let's change the output on there. Then we're going to press convert. If you've got multiple in there, obviously you can do convert all at the bottom. But for this one, we're just running a single video. So we're just going to press it there. Now this video is four minutes, 25 seconds, and it's converting in about 30 seconds. So it's a good ratio of um, original size to conversion speed. As you can see on the top right, there is a high speed conversion option that I'll show you when this is finished. This applies obviously faster conversion to certain formats. It doesn't support all of them. Um, high speed conversion does support there we go, some of the most commonly used ones, which is nice. Let's just turn this on and convert it again, just to see how much faster it is. It seems to be going along a little bit quicker than uh, previously, which is nice. But you get the idea we don't need that twice so let's now bring in another one we can do our import at the top here as well so as you remember it had the either drag or click to import your first video but if you want to add another one you can just do it up the top let's go for the flv this time um i'm not really sure what this was i think it's some kind of web uh screenshot of a website and then we will convert this one to let's go yeah let's go for uh mov i think for this one this was source at 1080 and i want this in 720 to match what we've done already convert now flv is a little bit of a, a less commonly used video format so this one may take a different amount of time in terms of the ratio that we saw with the mov to mp4 at the top already done so now let's take a look in our folder. So here are our converted ones all in order. And one thing you may want to do before you start converting is change the names. But for these examples, we don't need to actually change those. They can just stay as they are. There was VLC opening the other video that I opened. Um, on the top, we can do different folders, ISO files or IFO files. So if you do 
any maybe an operating system you can put that on there as well um, let's just drag in one of my original bigger videos so this is off a recent review that I shot on my GH4 this one was so this is currently an mp4 let's swap it over to um, MOV I'd like this in 4k as it is a raw 4k file 5 minutes 55 let's do convert for this one so that one looks to be about 12 minutes but I am converting mp4 to MOV in a full 4k resolution so it is going to obviously scale the amount of time it takes depending on the kind of format size you use. At the very start I did 720 by 1280 then we did a 1080 and obviously now we're going 4k which is four times that amount that the uh, previous ones were so there is going to be scaling of how long it takes. Um, other things we can do so audio converter you kind of get the idea it's going to be the same thing but for your sound. Download it if you wanted to download any um, videos from websites now compressor is quite a good one if you are a reviewer or you'd make YouTube content like me H.264 is a file format that can be really intensive on your CPU Premiere Pro is one of the programs that just doesn't like certain formats or it just doesn't run smoothly so a compressor could be a good option there to kind of just take out the real mass of the file size and just bring it down to a nice smaller manageable size of course you can convert it into a different format that Premiere Pro likes that's always another option there is a built-in video editor on the software as well, which is quite nice if you want to do some basic edits. Anyone that's going to want to do a you know, real full edit will use a dedicated piece of software, but for quick things like maybe adding a watermark, cropping down the size if you maybe you filmed in portrait but you want to crop that into landscape, you can do that easily there, or vice versa. Maybe you want to make a video for TikTok, you can crop that down. Subtitles, which is quite nice. And you can add those in in there if you wanted to do that and add those onto a certain video or you can add some audio tracks onto an existing video track kind of both kind of burn those in together the merger is what it sounds like it's going to merge two video formats together now screen recorder is going to be one of the most commonly used i would have said from the software here so this one all you need to do is either position the window you want to record then you've got different options here so you can do a custom size or just drag it like i just did there some preset here so full screen or custom lock the aspect ratio if you want to keep that as it is especially if you're going to bring it into some editing suite after you're going to want to keep that you know a certain size maybe 1920 by 1080 or even 4k so you're going to keep that as it is so you may go full screen lock the aspect ratio and then bring that down into a more kind of manageable size there you go there's a size that's perfectly scaled to edit you can do some system audio as well so if you want to change what you're going to be hearing so if you want to record your desktop you can do that or if you want to put your microphone on top of the voice like i'm literally doing now but with obs you can do that here you can add a webcam in as well but mine's currently active on obs so that won't be available to me then of course you can just hit record and start there's some more output settings here frame rates qualities and formats but if you happen to record in the wrong format you've got the exact software you need to convert it Start and end on schedule might be quite handy if you maybe film with a Zoom call to then play back to other colleagues or you know to distribute. Mouse clicks and recordings and sounds, you can add those in if you fancy it. Majority of people probably wouldn't use that. And then shortcuts to start and stop and pause and continue the videos. One of the more lesser features that you'd probably be using here, we've got the DVD burner. Not as many people will be using that nowadays, but it is nice to have the option should you want to do that. There may be an odd occasion where you do want to use a DVD and uh, this is a quite nice option to have should you need it. Additional things we've got down at the toolbox, the GIF Maker was one that I thought would be quite good. Maybe we could experiment a little bit with that. CD Ripper, nice to have a digital version of physical copies of discs. Some people may find it nice to be able to put their physical CD collection onto digital uh, media, especially as not all songs are available on streaming services. We've got simple transferring software to maybe move something from your phone to your PC or vice versa. From an external hard drive to your pc or maybe your phone to your hard drive or whichever way you, you fancy it there is that software on there as well which is nice then if you're feeling nostalgic you could also make yourself a cd mixtape so let's give a use case scenario maybe you want to burn a iso file from a dvd and you're not quite sure how to do it you don't really want to just kind of guess then you can either go to find solutions with the three lines at the top then to the user guides gives you some of the basic features there or if what you're after is not on there, you can press the little book in the bottom left, which will take you to the website. 
This will then give you all the options down the side. So we want to go on DVD burner. Then I want to find out how to convert a DVD to ISO. And then all of the information is in the step by step. So you can find exactly what you need to know really quite easily. So there we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed my look around the unit converter from Wondershare. If you've got any more questions or comments, then just leave them in the box below and I'll get back to you. I'll also put the software link on the website in the video description for anyone who wants to look at it in a bit better depth. There may be something that I didn't cover in this video that you you know you want to see in particular. So check out the website for more information. But apart from that, I think that's it. So thank you everyone for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and ding that bell so you don't miss an upload. Big thank you to Wondershare for sponsoring this video. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.